Welcome to this Titan tutorial. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to use Titan once installed. This can be done by installing and running as an app, running through NMR Box or in MATLAB. You can load in process data files into Titan using either NMR Pipe or Brucker Topspin. Make sure that all spectra are analyzed in the same way. If NMR Pipe is used, process using the linear and exponential window functions. To improve time taken for Titan analysis, make sure to only extract 1 H chemical shifts ranges between 7 to 10 ppm. Choose a binding model which is a microscopic association mechanism to which the experimental data is fitted. Binding models convert concentrations and model parameters into exchange rates of NMR calculations. The standard one people go for is two-state, which describes a simple binding process. Start simple. If things are not fitting, try exploring other models to understand why. Today we'll be analysing one of the many example sets of data you have access to in Titan. This data can be copied and pasted from an Excel spreadsheet for convenience or filled in cell by cell. However, remember that the paste function will override anything that is currently in the entire table of contents. The columns here will depend on the chosen binding model. The titration parameters, protein concentration, ligand concentration, number of scans, receiver gain are used in NMR acquisition need to be inputted. On selecting a data file name either manually or by pasting from the clipboard, Titan will automatically calculate an estimate of noise in the spectrum. This can be manually overwritten though if necessary. Accurate noise levels are necessary for correct weighting of residuals across multiple spectra. Plot the data to check if it's been correctly imported by viewing it as a colour map using the preview spectra command. Set up a pulse program for virtual spectrometer. Many pulse sequences are available for analysis, however, HSQC and HMQC are the most common. Make sure to pick the correct one as this will impact the line shapes in the indirect dimension of HSQC and HMQC experiments. In this set of measurements, the data was acquired using a 1H 15N HMQC experiment, so we will select HMQC. Now we need to specify the acquisition and processing parameters such as spectrometer frequency, frequency offset, spectrum width, the number of points in each dimension and the exponential line broadening applied during processing. 95% of the time the automatic data is okay from the input of NMR pipe data, otherwise you might need to edit. Such as scalar coupling constants must be edited. For fully protonated spin systems, approximate value of 6.5 Hz, however if the protein is pre-deuterated then this should be set to zero. For heteronuclear scalar coupling, 92 Hz is an appropriate value. When the spin system editor is open, a new spin will be created automatically and the ROI editor launched. Here on the left hand panel, it displays an overlay of all the experiments in the titration series. Density plots of each spectrum will be displayed on the right hand panel, which can be used to mark out the ROI. For every spin system and spectrum, a region of interest from the experimental data must be defined to select the data points to be used for fitting. Each spin system is a single residue, which is represented in Titan by sets of direct and indirect spin chemical shifts and line widths. Prior to fitting, initial estimates need to be given for each state specified by the binding model, which must have chemical shifts and line widths associated with it.
When a region of interest has been selected for the final spectrum, you'll be prompted to provide initial estimates of peak positions for each state in the binding model by left-clicking in the left-hand panel. The links in the top panel can be used to return for the ROI editor and to include or exclude the spin from any fitting process. Here we take a two-step approach to the fitting problem. For the first spectrum, fit only chemical shifts and line widths for the first state of the binding model. Now use all the spectra to optimize the chemical shifts and line width of the second state, together with model parameters. By default, line width of all are set to 20 per second, which are an acceptable starting point for fitting. The bottom panel in the spin editor provides control over which parameters should be optimized in the fitting process. Select to only fit parameters associated with the free state of the protein. Make sure to save the session if you don't want your parameters overwritten. The model parameters represent kinetic and thermodynamic constants such as KD and K off values that are required by the selected binding model. Although these aren't going to be fitted at this stage, we must still give them initial values, but the fitting should be turned off. The fitting process will use the current setup as a starting point, but these values will be overwritten by the new fitted value, so make sure to save if you don't want to lose this data. After clicking accept, you can select which spectra to be used in the current fit. For this first step, we only want to use the first spectrum. A number of options are provided to plot the fit results. Plot Overlays Contour opens a window showing the original spectrum in blue with fit superimposed in red and fitted peak positions in orange. Plot Overlays 3D opens a window showing a 3D view with observed data plotted in grey and fitted data in red. Separate windows are opened up for each spin group. Only data within the defined ROIs are shown. Three D plots are useful to check alongside contour plots to give better idea of signal to noise levels and whether intensities are being fitted accurately. Once fitting is complete, a variety of plots are available. Overlaid contour plots of observed and fitted spectra are a straightforward way to compare how good the fit is. However, deviations in peak intensities may not be obvious in such plots. These would be a clue that more complex binding is occurring. Return to the spin editor and turn on fitting of bound chemical shifts and all line width. Similarly, Turn on fitting of the model parameters KD and K off. Now run the fitting process again using all the spectra.
Once the fitting has been completed, there is the opportunity to run an error analysis. This will repeat the previous fitting step using the same starting parameters as before based on resampling of residuals from the best fit spectrum. To run, enter the number of resampled spectra to be generated. For the video, I will be recording three bootstrap replicas, but generally a hundred are recommended for final analysis. Once running, do not close the progress bar as this will stop the calculation. Once complete, a number of results may be displayed. The summary of results show the mean and standard error of parameters determined from the bootstrap analysis. Results of each individual fit may also be tabulated. Finally, the correlations between estimates of various parameters may be investigated via the covariance matrix. It is recommended to do both bootstrap and jackknife error analysis. Bootstrap to see how resistant the model is to adding noise, and jackknife to make sure you are not overly influenced by a specific peak. Jackknife removes one peak at a time and runs it.